Seahawks Today Rumors Mailbag coming up in just a few moments. But before we do, this month at Chat Sports, it is all about the likes. And I want to make sure that you like this video. We are trying to set the record for most likes for our company, and we need to represent here at Seahawks Today. So please, like this video, even if you don't like the content. Do us a favor, like the video if you love the Seahawks. Seahawks Today, presented by Manscaped. We will tell you all about Manscaped coming up later in the show. Tyler Jones here with you for a Rumors Mailbag edition of the program. You have questions, and you're in good luck because I have answers. So let's go ahead and get right to it with our first question this week. comes from Pablo. Pablo wants to know, when the Seahawks, are they going to sign DK Metcalf to a long-term deal? How much are the Seahawks going to offer DK Metcalf? Well, in case you've been living under a rock, let's go ahead and catch up to speed on what's gone on with DK Metcalf this week. Metcalf did not report to mandatory minicamp, and according to Espen's Jeremy Fowler, there has been no traction on an extension. Now, the projection that we've seen, the latest one from ESPN within the last couple weeks, showed DK Metcalf likely to get about a five-year, $130 million deal. Now, granted, that was before Cooper Cup recently got the deal he just received. So the longer this goes, the more that DK Metcalf is going to cost the Seattle Seahawks at this point in time. I think that's a pretty fair number. But we've seen this wide receiver market has just been insane for what they are paying receivers in this 2022 offseason. So, you know, I don't really know what they're going to have to pay DK Metcalf when it's all all said and done with where this receiver market is going. We've heard John Schneider and Pete Carroll were not expected to see this wide receiver market go the way it has. But look, DK Metcalf is the foundational piece for this franchise, for its their future. They have no choice but to pay DK Metcalf and give him what he wants. And DK missing mandatory minicamp, I don't think, is the end of the world. He's in a situation where if he were going to miss training camp and he got fined, he couldn't get that money back. You miss mandatory minicamp, you can get that money back for the fines that occurred there. So something to keep in mind on that front. Appreciate you bringing in that uh, question there. Now, you may be watching this wondering, well, how do I get to be a part of the mailbag? Well, It is only for subscribers, so make sure you are subscribed now to Seahawks Today and go to our community tab each and every week where we ask you to submit questions. Use that hashtag Seahawks, and who knows, you might be lucky enough to make it on our next episode, but you have to be a subscriber. Subscribe now, youtube.com slash Seahawks TV. That's youtube.com slash Seahawks TV. The next question in the inbox comes from Javier. Javier wants to know, What is one key player missing for the Seahawks to win at least eight games? Pretty simple question there, Javier. It's the quarterback position. I mean, you're not winning eight games with Drew Locke or Geno Smith. It's just simply not happening. And you look at this team. The Seahawks have done a really good job this offseason of improving throughout their roster except the quarterback position. They're fine at wide receiver, running back, offensive line got a lot better. When you look defensively, the secondary's better. The defensive line, you, you go on down the list, they got better in a lot of areas. But obviously there was a drastic step back at the quarterback position. So if the Seahawks, if that is the goal to get to eight min- wins or try to you know be a borderline playoff team of sorts, it would have to take making a move to find a quarterback to get to that spot. I don't know if it's a Baker Mayfield or a Jimmy Garoppolo, if, if those guys can get it done, but that's what it would be, the player that is missing that could take the lead this team to take the biggest step forward would be a quarterback as far as I'm concerned. But thanks for the question, Javier. This next one comes from Hetcha Popolis. That's a long one. Which player should the Seahawks trade? I have one name in particular that comes to mind. And I think Seahawks management has been trying to figure out what to do with him. That's L.J. Collier. L.J. Collier didn't get the fifth-year extension that he wanted. And now he's kind of just playing the waiting game, hoping to just make the roster at this point in time. 
And if you could get just anything for LJ Collier, I mean, what was the movie, Semi-Pro, when they traded the guy for a washing machine? I mean, LJ Collier, if you can get a sixth-round, seventh-round pick, washing machine, I don't care, whatever it may be, if you can just trade LJ Collier and get something for him, that would be nice because at the end of the day, LJ Collier is a guy that has shown some potential at times but he can't stay healthy and battling for a roster spot. You've already replaced him with the moves that you've made in this draft, bringing in Boy Mafe and Tyreek Smith. I would trade LJ Collier if you can at all possible. Who do you guys think the Seahawks should trade? Is there a player that comes to mind of somebody that they should move on from before the season begins? Let me know in the comments section. Name a player the Seahawks should trade off here before the season begins. Man in a Pit wants to know, thinking of the Seahawks' opener against Russell Wilson and the Broncos, which of our defensive players will give them the most trouble and which of theirs will give our offense the most trouble? Well, for the Seahawks, for me, you know, it's interesting because when the Seahawks players have been going up against Russell Wilson over the last couple of years, they haven't been able to make contact with him, right? You know, he puts on that red jersey and obviously he can't hit the quarterback in practice. I would imagine all these guys coming back will love the opportunity to try to get uh, a, you know, a good hit or two on Russell Wilson if the opportunity presents itself. Jordan Brooks, your new leader of this Seahawks defense, the guy that's going to be calling the shots, leading the way at that inside linebacker spot, he's one I'm watching for that could give the Broncos some troubles in that game and be a menace to deal with for Russell Wilson. On the other side for Denver, Patrick Sertan. This guy is something else. Four interceptions last year, including a touchdown grab. And as mentioned, with the issues at the quarterback spots that the Seahawks have, you know, I wouldn't pass Patrick Sertan to give the Seahawks some fits to possibly get an interception in that game and, you know, play the role of a lockdown corner of sorts. So that'd be the name I would probably say is the most concerning matchup-wise to deal with in that game going forward uh, to open up the season between the Seahawks and the Broncos. Today's show is presented by Manscaped. Father's Day just around the corner, and I have quite the deal for you. It is the Platinum Package with the promo code Seahawks at checkout. You'll save 52%. The Platinum Package, you may ask, what does it include? Well, the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, the Weed Whacker for ear and nose hairs. You know Dad's got to get rid of all those nose hairs, right? Also, the Ultra Premium Body Wash, so you can be smelling fresh and get that two-in-one shampoo and conditioner as well as the deodorant so you can be out in the yard and not have to worry about sweating too much and being stanky. Also, uh, it includes the Crop Preserver uh, Ball Deodorant, the Crop Reaver uh, Ball Sprayer Toner, as well as boxers and the travel bag included as well. All online now. Manscape.com promo code Seahawks, 52% off on the Platinum Package, 20% off plus free shipping with the uh, promo code Seahawks. Check it out there, Manscaped.com. Next question comes from Batman Fan 20 Batman. Should the Seahawks sign Sheldon Richardson or Geno Atkins? I have a better idea than Sheldon Richardson or Geno Atkins. The answer is neither. The name I would come up with that plays the same position is Larry Ogunjobi is who I would consider for that spot. Ogunjobi is somebody that I still have no idea why is still available on the free agent market at this point in time. Young guy coming off a decent season last year where he helped take the Bengals to the Super Bowl. Seven sacks, 12 tackles for loss, 49 tackles. Why is he still available? Great question. He would be the name I would look at. I would ignore the prospects of Sheldon Richardson or Geno Atkins. And if I'm going to sign anybody right now, it would be Larry Ogunjobi. But very good question there. Antonio wants to know, franchise quarterback in the next draft? Well, look, if the Seahawks aren't going to make any moves for any quarterbacks this offseason, which it doesn't look like as of right now, then, yes, you have to draft a quarterback early in next year's draft. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. And Mel Kuyper this week released – His uh, top quarterback rankings, he has Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud as his uh, top quarterbacks. And uh, here's a look at their uh, information. Young, of course, won the Heisman Trophy last year. Lacks ideal size, but 
the rest of the intangibles appear to be there. And, of course, played in the national championship game last year for Alabama, ultimately losing to Georgia. He's going to be the favorite for the Heisman Trophy again this year. Meanwhile, C.J. Stroud, last year he had a plethora of receivers there at Ohio State. The receiving core is not going to be as good this year. So, for NFL draft scouts for teams, they're going to get a better feel for how good C.J. Stroud really is this year. He offers better size than Bryce Young does, but – did benefit from that supporting cast last year. Started out slow and then really balled out last year. I like both these quarterbacks a whole lot better than I do any of the quarterbacks in this past draft. If you had to pick one of these two, Bryce Young or C.J. Stroud, who would it be? Type B.Y. for Bryce Young. Type C.J. for uh, C.J. Stroud. Last question in the inbox. This one comes from Nick. Nick says, here's an idea. If the Bears do poorly and draft top three next year, we trade for Justin Fields. I can see the Bears start over with a new GM and coach, trade our highest first-round pick possible, and a second and a future day one or day two pick for him thoughts. Okay, there's a lot to break down there. Uh, first off, if the Bears are bad enough that they've gotten to the point where they are shopping Justin Fields, I probably don't want Justin Fields. And not at that value either of giving up a first and a second. No. Um I would say I would have to pass on that. Look, I'm, I think Justin Fields can be fine. I think that he was a you know a decent pickup for the Bears in the draft uh, last year, and you know he had some moments here and there. They got to get him a better offensive line there in Chicago. That's pretty obvious. But for me, I, I don't just see that really being feasible for them to look at Justin Fields, quite frankly, and and the Bears. If, if they're moving on from Justin Fields after this year, then something went terribly wrong. So, no, I, I don't see that as a possibility. But thanks for the question anyway. Before we go, if you made it to the end of the video, then type gang in the comments section. Our subscribers, you guys are the absolute best. You're the reason why we do this show each and every day here on Seahawks Today. And so let us know if you're there by uh, typing in gang. And we appreciate you joining us here on Seahawks Today.